most people do not have money issues. They have behavior issues that cause money issues. So what are some of the biggest mistakes that entrepreneurs make or some of the things that, that they need to know that they don't think about when they're starting their business around money? I want to take the friction away from all of your investing and I want to put the friction in for all of your spending. I want to make it harder for you to spend and easier for you to invest. Mr. Mel Abraham in the house. What's happening, Welcome Evan? Forward. What's going on? I love it. Oh, look at the background. You got the you got the TV screens going with the with the show. Man, it's been crazy. So yeah, we've got we've got branding going on all over the place. I love it. What what are the Chinese things you got on the wall there? You know, I lived in, and trained in Japan. I've been in the martial arts for 40 plus years. These are my hand painted certificates oh, from my sensei it, in Japan. Oh, it's Japanese. Okay, yeah, yeah, I see it. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, I didn't know that. Okay, so guys, if you don't know Mel Abraham, he's one of the smartest money people I know. Uh, he is behind the scenes to a lot of the people that you know and recognize. And I've been pushing this guy for a while, <laughs> ever since I met him, like, Mel, when's the show coming? When's the YouTube channel coming? People need to know your name, man. You, you got to get all that goodness that's in here. And, in, and one, of the, one of the most heart-centric people you're ever going to meet, too. You got to get out into the world. And it's finally happening. He launched his new show. Somebody says Mel for president in the house. I love that. <laughs> uh, that's Bo Hawkins, our mutual friend. And so he launched a new show called The Affluent Entrepreneur uh, that you guys should go check out. Tell me it's a YouTube show too. Yes, it is. All the episodes will be video and audio and, and um, transcribed. So, I mean, you can digest it 12 ways from Sunday. I love it. I'm excited, dude. We got we to gotta build this brand up. Okay, so there's a lot I want to ask you, but why don't we start with this? Like, what actually, you've been doing this for so long, you've helped so many people. What actually made the spark to say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this into a show? Like, what actually, I know lots of people have been pushing you, and I was like a tiny bit of that, but what actually got you to say, now's the time? Uh, it literally it's, it's been my, my last two years journey. So one of the challenges for me was this, and, and this was, I'm a CPA by education and, uh, and I had, I had a, a dear, dear friend of mine. We were talking cause he's been pushing me also, um, and James Wedmore has been pushing me also. And he says, why won't you go do this? See, cause I don't want to, I said, I, I don't want to get pushed back into that CPA realm. You know, Hey Mel, can I buy an hour of your time kind of realm? And he goes, Oh, he says to me, he says, Here's the challenge I see. He says, you see yourself as a CPA that happens to be a thought leader and an entrepreneur. He said, but what we all see you as is a thought leader and an entrepreneur that happens to be a CPA. He says, you have a process. It works. It works for other people. It works for you. It's time to get the process out. There's a need out there. And then that was literally three months before my cancer diagnosis. You know, and that's when, so I got diagnosed with a cancer in June of 2019. And in that moment, we had just come back from, from Puerto Rico and, you know, everything's great. I'm flying on the G5. Everything was great. And now life got turned upside down and, and I had to fight the cancer, um, over the last two years, you know, physically, medically, mentally, spiritually, energetically, but I didn't have to fight it financially. Is that, is that I was able to extract myself out of the business and have a financial machine to take care of me without having to shift our lifestyle, without having to sit back and say, hey, honey, we got to sell things. You know what I mean? Sell, sell her shoes, which would have been worse than the cancer, you know? So it's like, so then right after that, I watched the pandemic hit and I saw so many entrepreneurs that were what I call treadmill entrepreneurs. And when that treadmill stopped, so did their money, so did their livelihood, so did their passion, so did their lives. It started, they started to struggle. And I go, man, this is important that I took for granted how I built my business, how I built my financial life. And I, you know, and then that's when I kind of said, you know, my, my son tells me, he goes, dad, he says, because I raised him as a single full-time dad since he was six. And he said, you've always told me that financial Financial independence is a birthright to go claim it. He says, it's time you get that message in the world. 
And that's, that's really what the catalyst was, was how do I go out there and get the message in the world? There's those that I work with on one-on-one and my programs and everything, but the reality is, is that how do I actually give that belief that, that, that the tools, the strategies, and some of that stuff to people in the broader market? And the best way for me was the show. The best way for me was the show. How are you doing on the health side? How's, how's the cancer? Uh, so, how are you feeling? So uh, three surgeries, four tumors, 33 treatments. And as of last two, uh, two weeks ago, I went in for my last scope, which was the one-year milestone. Completely clear, completely clean, done. So we're not done in the sense that we always have to watch over it. But the fact of the matter is that I'm no longer playing defense. We're playing offense. We're preventing this bad boy from coming back. But I am clean, healthy, and feeling great. Makes me happy, dude. I, th- I think about you maybe too much. <laughs> if I'm honest, like every, for whatever reason, every time, because I know you're going on the runs, every time I go on a run, which is three to four times a week, you always pop into my head for, for a little moment while I'm doing my running. And, and I think, um, I'm not going to message, I'm not going to text him again, ask how he's doing it. That feels like I'm a stalker. But, but anyway, I'm, I'm super glad Dude, to do well. I appreciate uh you've always done that and and you know it's funny because we met we haven't known each other too too long but it was there was just a connection right from the get-go it, it might have been because i convinced you to start texting <laughs> yeah, that's true i think you might be the first person i texted you i was i was yeah <laughs> mel abraham taught me how to text um okay so let's dive into some money things so what i mean the, the affluent entrepreneur is a show the, the pin comment is there thank you to bo we popped that in uh, go check it out on iTunes, YouTube. The YouTube show is is the same name, or it's just Mel Abraham, or what? It'll be under my Mel Abraham channel as a playlist. So yeah, unless you tell me, I should be doing it as a separate. No, under under because you're not doing other content on your channel, right? No, no. Yeah. yeah. So just yeah, Mel Abraham is perfect, uh, and we can dive into YouTube stuff later. Yeah, but, but let's, and, let's uh, talk about. And it's on Spotify also for those that are Android users. Perfect. So, what are some of the biggest mistakes? that entrepreneurs make or some of the things that that they need to know that they don't think about when they're starting their business around money? So so I think one of the first things when we start to think about uh, finances and and business and money all together is that we separate the two. Mm -hmm. We actually look at the business and we're going, I'm running the business, I'm running the business and we we step out of the business and now we're going to run our personal life, our, our financial life personally. Well, they're integrated. They're one. They, they, they need to work in concert with each other. And that if our business is our, is our primary or my, my foundational wealth building tool, then how am I using it to actually build wealth? And the mistake, one of the big mistakes that they make is that we're taking all our profits and plowing it right back into the business to grow the business. Now, at the beginning, we got to do that for a little while so we can get some traction. But at some point, what we need to do is start spinning off some of that profit, allocating slices of it. So we're building a financial machine outside the business, especially if you're in personal brands, because most of our personal brands are not sellable. And there's nothing at the end of the, t- the day if we stop doing the work that we do. And so what we need to, to consider is how do we use the business and integrate our financial, personal financial world with our business world in the sense that that one's funding the other. What what I love about you is that you, I mean, you work on some pretty big, complex, giant, millions and millions and millions of dollar deals, but you can also break it down to help the person who's at yeah. the beginning just starting up. And and it's kind of rare because most people, like, they specialize. It's great that you can, you got all this super wisdom here, but you can bring it down to the, the everyday, you know, Joe. Um, what do you recommend for somebody who's maybe in the earlier stages where they don't have a lot of money coming in? Do you say, okay, once you hit a certain threshold or no, like from the beginning, you have to pay yourself first. Where, where do you stand on that? So I, I stand on right from the beginning. Here's, here's what I believe is that uh, money issues, most, most people do not have money issues. They have behavior issues that cause money issues. And so what we need to do is start building the right habits and behaviors to shift our money issues. And, and so the way we do that is in small increments. It's, it's in small do- doses. And, and so that's part of it. The other part of it is this. The, the earlier, the more we can front load our investing, the, the earlier we start building wealth, 
the more the heavy lifting is done by time. If it Because what happens is that when we build wealth, it stays flat for a little while. You're putting $50 in a week and you don't see it. You don't see it grow. And then all of a sudden it starts to ramp up because it starts to get money momentum, as I call it. And when that money momentum hits, listen, 50 bucks a week turns into 350,000 over a couple of decades. And, you know, now if you put it to 200 bucks a week and you're putting, you know, $800 a month away, now all of a sudden you've got $1.2 million. But the problem is that we often wait to start developing the muscle and all of a sudden we never develop the muscle and the habits. So I start them right from the get go. Um, the other thing that I think we need to think about is what I call the, the, the wealth priority pathway. Most people live their life this way. They, they earn income. And then they spend it, they look at what's left, and then they'll use that to invest. The problem is what you're investing for is your future, which means that what you're using for your future is just the scraps because we didn't make it a priority. When you look at the, the wealthy, the truly, truly wealthy, what they do is they earn income. They make wealth, uh, wealth building and investing a priority. So they invest first, they look at what's left and they say, this is for my lifestyle. And, and they start to create the lifestyle based on that. And if they don't like it, then it's time to figure out how we can earn more, ramp it up, scale it up, optimize profits. So we have more for the lifestyle, but we don't forsake our future in the process. If somebody's at the beginning, to get tactical, what, how much am I saving or what kind of percentage of revenue or however we're calculating it? And then where am I putting it if I'm not a sophisticated investor? Cool. So here's a couple, a couple things. First things first is what I want people to do is get a vision for their, their life. What, what is their financial vision? Because until we have a target, we just start throwing things. We, we don't even know when we've, we've hit the finish line. And too often we're, we're looking at how do I replace my income? Well, let's figure out, let's take a, a quick look at, the, at our lifestyle, figure out what that lifestyle should look like. And now let's put a price tag on it. So now we have a target. And once we have the target, what I try to try to get my clients to do is at, at some point, depending on age, at some point, I actually want them putting 20 to 25 percent of their income away. Now, some people say, I can't I'm barely paying my bills now. And I go, all right. So if you're just starting out and you don't have that cushion in your cash flow, then here's a couple of things I want you to do. I want you to start looking at starting at five percent. Just start at 5%. Trust me, if you start to look at it and you say, I'm making $50,000 a year. Oh, shoot, I'm going to do math on the fly here. At $50,000 a year, that's that's 200 bucks a month. It's $50 a week, okay, that I'm putting away. $50 a week is basically 10 bucks every working day. And so if we went through your, your bills, if we went through your credit card statements, if we went through... Um, your, your bank statements, I bet that we could find some, some leaks that you could take and find 10 bucks a day to put away and, and build that up. And you know, I've heard so many people say, and this is our dear friend, you know, David Bach talks about the latte factor. And uh, I've heard people you know, ridicule it. And I go, no, wait a second. If the objective is to build behavior, to build habits, we start with the latte factor, but that grows into something that, that is amazing because you have built the muscle, the habits, and the, and the things that most people that build wealth do. We can't expect to build wealth if we're not doing the same things that they do. And so, so I would start out with 5%. And then every quarter, every quarter, I would look at how do you grow it? How do you increase it by one percentage point, one and a half percentage points until you get yourself to a point that you're up at 20 percent of your income? And it just it's going to take time. You might be working in a job and you're not an entrepreneur. Totally get it. And if that's the case, you get a raise. Let's say they give you a cost of living raise and they give you three percent. I get it. Take one and a half percent of that raise and move it into your 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 future and then live off of that additional one and a half percent. You still get a little bit of a raise, but you're also contributing that raise until you get to that 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 percentage point that makes sense. And then and then you can work from there. Now, where do you put it? Initially, 
initially, if you don't have a retirement account, uh, and depending on what country you're in, you know, whether it's an IRA, uh, Roth, or some, some plans in, in Canada and the UK, then I would find at, at the beginning a high yield cash account and just transfer it. I want it out of sight, out of mind. Um, I want it automatic. So if I know that I'm going to get a salary check uh, that's the same every month, and I'm going to say I want 5% to go to this account every month. And you set it up with your bank. It's automatic. It's out of sight, out of mind. Here's, here's what I'm trying to do. I want to take the friction away from all of your investing, and I want to put the friction in for all of your spending. I want to make it harder for you to spend and easier for you to invest. And too often, it's the other way around. Oh, I got to write a check. I got to go to the brokerage account. I got to do this. And then we never do it because I haven't got around to it because there's too much friction to get you there. And so we want to make it automatic. And so those are the first few things that I would do. Now, high yield cash account, they don't, have, they don't yield a ton, but they yield more than a savings account um, in today's inter low interest rate environment. But there's three characteristics of a high yield cash account I think you want to look at. One is that it is 100% fully liquid. Okay. So I can get access to the money anytime because once we accumulate enough in there, then we'll probably put it into some sort of investments. Okay. But at the beginning, we only have 50 bucks or, or $100 at a time going in there. We might want to accumulate it into a lump sum of a couple thousand and then move it in. The second characteristic of a high yield cash account is that it is insured. This is your this is your future. This is your liquid funds. I want to make sure it's insured. Most of most of the the banks, especially in the U.S. Um, and and Canada, they have certain levels of insurance, two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or so or so. So you make sure it's insured. We want to keep it safe. And the third aspect of it is that it's completely uh, free of any fees. They're not going to charge you anything to have the account. And so when we do that, money's coming in, 5% is moving off. It's accumulating in a high yield cash account. At some point, we then look at, at that and say, hey, I think I'm going to move it into some index funds or an ETF or some other investment from there. But I want it off your spending, off your list. So now it is, it is moving out of sight, out of mind. So you have the ability to then invest it. The entrepreneurs who maybe are are minimizing the income that they have because they don't want to pay a lot of taxes, do you ever move to model of instead of percentage of income, percentage of revenue for the business? So I actually um, I actually do percentage of revenue when we start to grow at that level. And so one of the things and then it just depends on how we do it. Um, uh, look, um, this is something that we did in, in, the, in the past years because income levels were growing and this and that. I put a specific type of retirement plan into my business, into my company called a defined benefit plan that allows me to put a ton more away that I can invest, get a tax deduction, and still have control of the money. So what we need to do is as you start to grow, is we need to look for the avenues that fit your circumstances. And, and when I say circumstances, it's your revenues, how, how big of a company is, what kind of cash flow, the regularity of the cash flow, your age, because uh, I don't know how, I, I'm, well, I'm not supposed to ask, a, ask a, a, a lady her age, but I can ask you, how old are you? I turned 41 in on May 20th, so however many oh, days that is. It's coming. Dude, man, it's eight days away, a week away. It's coming, I know. Wow, I'll be 60 this year. So, Are you kidding me? You're 60? No, September 2nd. I, yeah, I know. Act Holy 12, cow, dude. You do not. <laughs> you look, you're looking great for 60. That's crazy. Thank yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so here's the thing. I got almost 20 years on you. The investments that you would go in would be very different than the investments that I would go in. You know, because... You have this longer runway. Now, hopefully I have a long runway too, but, but you're 20 years behind me, you're 19 years behind me type of a thing. So we can take a little more risks with you that we might not take with me. And so circumstances are dictated by age and stage, but the investing principles work no matter what. You know, I look at my son, 
who's um, he's 31. His wife is 27. Uh, they're expecting their first child, so I'm going to be a granddad for the first time. Look out, world. Uh, I'm in trouble. Show. I'm in trouble because it's going to be a granddaughter, so I, I have no idea how I'd ever say no to that little princess. You're going to spoil her cra- – uh, you're going to spoil her like crazy. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> here, here they are at 31, 27. Now, like I said, I raised him since he was uh, um, six, so he's been, he's been brainwashed into all of this thinking. And uh, at this age already, they have three homes. They have a multi-million dollar net worth. They literally know, I talk about the idea of being an affluent entrepreneur is to live a rich life and not just a wealthy life. And so after they found out that they're having a daughter, they looked at my my wife and I said, hey, can you watch our dog? And I go, sure. We love watching. We love your dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How long? He said, for a month. I go, a month? What are you talking about? A month? I go, he says, well, we know when the, when the baby's born, we're not going to get as much time to travel. Mm-hmm. So we just rented an Airbnb in Maui, and we're going there for a month. And it's because they set their business and their life up right that allowed them the liberation, the freedom to do something like that. And that's what I think we're entitled to. And, it, and it, there's nothing wrong with, with looking towards that and, and trying to make that happen. I love it, dude. Uh, somebody's asking, how can I get in contact with Mel? He shared amazing advice and loved the way he explains things. Well, the affluent entrepreneur, let's go check that show out for sure. And, and, yeah. then, and then what? Like, where do people connect with you? Instagram, email, your it, website, courses, what? what? So I've got, uh, so uh, Instagram for sure. Uh, my website is melabraham.com. Uh, we have I do have programs called the Affluent, the Affluent, uh, Affluence Blueprint, which walks through some of the principles and the processes and the, and the, the tools and all that stuff. Um, and, and then the show. I'm going to be taking – so the show is going to be a combination. This is partly your – this is your doing, Evan. Um, so it's going to be me, me teaching. Little tiny bit. Um, me teaching and then also me bringing guests on. Uh, like this. So Evan will bring uh, bring you on and we'll have conversations, but also taking questions and doing live mentoring and live coaching on, on air with, with folks, just like, just like you do. And so, so it is a place that I want people to connect. It's a place where we can have real conversations about money that are safe. I mean, too, too often we demonize money too often. We, we say it's taboo. Don't talk about it. But fact of the matter is, is that there's no problem in the world that ever gets solved if we don't have conversations around it. So let's have real conversations and not make it bad. Uh, you, you, look at, um, you, you look at what we can do when we have the financial flexibility to do things. I mean, another dear friend of ours, Allison, Allison J. Prince. Um, so I was, I was working with her and she called me up. Uh, she called me up about a year ago and said, she goes, you're the only one I can talk to you about this. And so what's up? She says, I hit all my numbers. And I said, well, that's freaking great. You hit all your numbers. I said, but why don't you sound excited? And she said, well, what do I do now? I go, what do you mean? She goes, do I just increase the numbers? And I go, ah. So one of the core principles that I talk about is that we need to know our why before our how and how much. And I said, let's talk about your why. Well, her why is to give women the possibility of independence in their lives. And so we restructured her business in a way that every time she made a sale, she'd, she'd make a microloan to a woman in a third, third world country. And this last, mm-hmm. last week, we, her and I did a, an interview in a live, and she says, do you know, after we reworked this, do you know how many microloans we've given out in, in just a year's time? And I said, and I'm thinking it's like 500. I don't know, you know, that seems like a big number to me. And she goes, over 7,000. That's like, awesome. Oh, my God. 7,000 7, families' lives have changed because we had the, the funding and we stre- changed it to work it in a certain way. And she goes, and you know what's even more beautiful? She goes, I'm not doing it in my name. I'm doing it in all of my customers' names. And they get the credit. And I go, that's why we should be talking about money because we have the ability. I don't think, I truly believe that when we stand shoulder to shoulder as a humanity, we can solve anything. And that's what I want to do. Guys, Mel is one of the smartest guys I know around money. And he's also got a giant heart. And uh, I definitely think you should go check out the affluent entrepreneur. Mel, super appreciate the time, man. I'm so glad that you're doing this. And 
I mean, this is one small thing we can do together, but if I can be of any value to you in building this up, I'm in. Thank you, but thank you, buddy. I, I, I look forward to it. it. I appreciate you bringing me on saying, hi. it's just good to see your smiling face. One good looking dude. It. Check it All out right, guys. Bye. Affluent entrepreneur. Appreciate you, Mel. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, buddy. If you want to see the one-on-one -on -one I did with Tony Robbins, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. The quality of your life has nothing to do with how much money you have, how many beautiful children you have, how many people love you. The quality of your life is where you live emotionally.